I'll crown you, you little cheat. Oh, no, I'm late. There is no pleasure in victory if you win by cheating. Never forget that. And if you think you're sneaking out now when I'm about to slaughter you, forget it. Yes. Thank you. Get out! Ripley? Do you know who that was on the phone? Sergeant Andrews of the Missing Persons Department. He wasn't able to tell me your whereabouts. Perhaps you are. Well, I was at Jeremy's house. I lost track of time. I'm sorry. I seem to remember hearing that before. I'm grounding you for a week, Ripley. I hope so. You're Grant Logan? The legend in the flesh. But don't be intimidated. My name's Bruce Davies. I received a threat yesterday evening. A threat on your life? No, on my car. I own a vintage Rolls Royce. I spent a fortune restoring it to Concorde condition. And I'm entering it into the Waterbury Concorde d'Elegance tomorrow. Hmm. Hmm. What do you make of it? There's no doubt in my mind that this is a threatening letter. Excuse me. It says, if you love your Rolls Royce, remove it from the Waterbury Concourse. If you don't, your car will never be the same. Take this threat seriously. Sounds like another competitor in the Rolls Royce class. Tell Mr. Davies you'll have to supervise the car's transport to the show and talk with the other Rolls Royce owners. Shouldn't be too challenging. It shouldn't be, but... But what? You're on your own this time. What? My mum, she... Well... To whom am I speaking? Oh, it's Jeremy, Mrs. Hilliard. Oh, your friend has been grounded. He isn't allowed to leave the house or talk to his friends on the phone for one week. I would like to speak to your mother, Jeremy. Will you fetch her, please? My mummy can't come to her phone at the moment, Mrs. Hilliard. She's pruning desires. Well, call her inside. This is important. She's pruning the azaleas in France. She's staying at Aunt Sylvie's house for a week. Sorry. He's hung up on me. The author of your threat letter is another entrant in the Rolls-Royce class of the car show. Someone is trying to scare you out of entering because you might ruin their chances of winning. So you think I should drop out of the competition? Not at all. I will personally make sure that your car arrives and departs the show in complete safety. Easy, man. Is there some reason to keep doing that? I thought I saw someone suspicious approaching the back of the trailer. Yes. That's got rid of him. Well, just be careful. Take that spot there. If I weren't careful, Mr. Davis, I wouldn't be in this business.
I believe Grant and Logan are the words you're searching for. By comparing the typing on the car's history with the typing on the threat letter, I should be able to identify our criminal. Get off my car! My God! Someone's threatened to destroy my precious rose if I don't remove it from the competition. Security! Another rose owner has received a similar threat. Really? Oh, when the crowd dies down, I'll see if it matches ours. Oh, no. Say it isn't true. Say it's just a nightmare. That's so good. Can't we, Carol? Can't we, it's me, Carol? Yeah, from Johnny Silver. Work. Hello. Let's find out. How oh, tacky. Has the man no pride showing off like that? Oh. Grant Logan. <laughs> <laughs> what a surprise. I'll say. I haven't seen you in ages. You haven't given up, actually. Have you? No, no. The theatre is my life. Of course. Now, wait, wait, wait. What was the, um, the ad you did on the telly a while back? Uh, the one on Tidy Flash? <laughs> Wash and scrub the porcelain tub. You were splendid. I couldn't stop seeing that melody for weeks. But that was you. <laughs> well, you know. Is this your Rolls Royce 24? My pride and joy. Restored her myself. In between acting jobs, of course. So it took many, many years. Clock's a little noisy at 120, but otherwise she runs like a dream. I'm paying you to guard this car, not dent it. Actually, I'm a detective now. I mean, a real one. I'm protecting the car for this poor fellow, so I have to pretend it's mine. <laughs> it was a stunning performance. You had me utterly convinced. <laughs> well, it's terrific seeing you, Grant. Good luck in the gumshoe trade. <laughs> Very nice meeting you, Mr... Lloyd. It's Nicholas Lloyd. If you do change your mind about selling the car, please give me a call in my car. Grant Logan, private detective. I've just placed your face. You were in that TV series, Johnny Silver. I was. My wife and I thought you played the definitive Johnny Silver. Another member of the silent majority. So much better than that oaf who replaced you. Pleasure meeting you. I'm driving the rolls back home. I'll meet you back at the house with the trailer. Sir, I must insist you do not. There is a madman loose who intends to destroy your car. So I've seen. Oh, when you get back to the house, park the trailer behind the garage next to the water drop.
figures. Come round inside and I'll write you out a check. Good heavens, look at you. My wife will throw a fit if you tread mud in her kitchen. Stay where you are. How much do I owe you? Um, hundred pounds. <laughs> a hundred pounds? Plus fifty for expenses. A hundred and fifty? For expenses, yes, and a uh, hundred for my fee. Go away. No, don't hang up. My mother will be home any minute, and I'm not allowed to use the phone. Now tell me, how's our case going? It's completely taken care of. Taken care of? We even got paid 250 pounds. Not bad for a day's work. Hold on. Somebody at the door. Yes? Investigator Hinks, Grayshot Insurance Company. Not interested. I'm fully covered. Are these yours, sir? I've been looking everywhere for those. Thank you very much. Oh, yes, of course. Sorry. May I come in, please, Mr. Logan? There's a couple of questions I'd like to ask you. Regarding what? Sometime yesterday, between 3 and 5 p.m., Reed Carroll's trailer was broken into. His car, the Silver Bullet, insured for half a million pounds, was stolen. What? find my gloves the same place I found your fingerprints inside mr. Carroll's trailer you must have left them behind when you stole the silver bullet you think that I stole the silver bullet no I'm sure you can explain how your fingerprints and gloves ended up inside a locked trailer to which you didn't have the key I can actually yes only I don't need to because your case lacks the one thing that every crime needs. A motive. Your claim to fame is Johnny Silver. A role you inherited when Reed Carroll quit after six successful years. With you in the lead, the show lasted five episodes. Six episodes, actually. Fans of the show rejected you because in their hearts, Reed Carroll was Johnny Silver. You're a bitter man, Mr. Logan. Bitter towards Reed Carroll, who you hold responsible for your failed career. That is your motive. Me? Bitter towards Reed Carroll? Reed Carroll? Oh, no. Oh, no. Let me tell you about Reed Carroll. Acting to Reed Carroll was like an involuntary muscular spasm. He had the profile of an anteater. I have bars of soap in my bathroom that can recite Shakespeare better than Reed Carroll. So, why would I feel an ounce of bitterness? Listen here, Logan. I was a thug with a one-way ticket to Wormwood Scrubs till I started watching Johnny Silver. Reed Carroll turned my life around. He made being a good guy look cool. I wept the day I turned my telly on and saw your mug underneath those opening credits. If it was up to me, you'd have been locked up years ago for your acting. Rick, what shall I do? Don't talk to anyone until we've figured out who's trying to frame you. Isn't it obvious? Obvious to you and obvious to me are two different things. Reed Carroll stole his car for the insurance money and tried to pin it on me! Whatever you do, don't go to his house. If you break in, you'll only further incriminate yourself. I'm going to prove it! I'm going to make him pay for trying to make Grant Logan his patsy! <laughs> Good 
Good afternoon, and God bless you, Mr. Carroll. My name is... Grant, what a surprise! Come on inside, take off that silly costume. So, what's with the costume? Oh, I came straight from the set. You gave up acting, I thought. I occasionally do cameos to appease my needy fans. <laughs> well, you know how it is. Do I ever? Well, let's step into my office. May I offer you some cameo? Have oh, yeah. you? Uh, no, thank you. It's Beluga. Cost me a hundred pounds a spoonful. I have it flown in from Russia by private jet. I can't stand the stuff. You know, it's funny you should have stopped by. I've been meaning to call you. Get some acting pointers, I suppose. I want to hire you to find my car. Really? That's interesting. I would have thought that the insurance company had appointed an investigator to the case. Oh, yes. But these insurance people don't respect my privacy. Their starstruck demeanor irritates me. The way they fawn all over me, you know how that is. It can be tiresome, yes. Yeah, well, I'm confident that you will respect my privacy, having been in the limelight once yourself. You know, I... I have to confess something. I envy you, Grant. Yes, well... <laughs> you know. I sometimes wish I could slip into complete anonymity the way you have. Sorry, careless of me. Doesn't stain. Hello. Just keep calm. No, I'm not ready to speak with your people. Do you mind if I take this next door? No, no, okay. take your time. Time. <laughs> it's beluga, actually. It costs a hundred pounds a spoonful. I hope it spawns in your gut and has to be surgically removed. <coughs> Nicholas Noyes, classic cars. Location and procurement of unique motor cars worldwide. Shush, <laughs> mongrel. Call off your wolves, Barbara. I'll have the money in a couple of days. If you don't, I'm selling the details of our amicable little divorce to the tabloids. Oh. Sorry. Things have become a bit strained between me and the ex-Mrs. Carroll. Sounds it. I mean, it sounds it. By the wavering tone of your voice, it denotes the confusion and sense of loss you must feel. You know, you have a really keen eye for this line of work. I hope you'll accept my offer. I'd do anything to get the silver bullet back. What happens? What's happened to all the caviar? Oh, I tried it and found I couldn't resist it. Hope you don't mind. Oh. <laughs> no, not at all. No, I, I was worried that Hannibal had nicked it. He's terribly oh, allergic yeah. to seafood. What happens if he eats seafood? It all goes right through him, like a cannonball. In one end, out the other. <laughs> well, I must run and make a start. Certainly got my time cut out. <laughs> Hannibal, what are you doing? My 50,000 pound Persian carpet! <laughs>
Ralph has hired me to find his stolen car. Isn't that interesting, considering he's the thief? Well, why would he steal his own car when he can just sell it? Because he can't sell it and he needs the money. He's in the middle of a very bitter divorce. How do you know that? Hey, kid. I am a detective. Well, why do you think he hired you? To set me up even further and try and build a foolproof case against me. He's assuming I will not be able to find his car. He is assuming wrong. Uh, uh, one minute, Gran. Uh, yes, Gran. You might want to turn on the telly. A man on bicycle discovered the wrecked Jaguar this afternoon. The car was burnt beyond recognition. However, one of the car's trademark hubcaps was blown clear from the vehicle. The car belonged to actor Reed Carroll, who starred as Johnny Silver in the hit TV series. Oh, I liked him. Actor Grant Logan, who replaced Reed Carroll in the role, is wanted in connection with the theft. He was dreadful. Investigate Only hair, please. Find him for questioning. <laughs> Thanks, Gran. Oh. Thanks. Well, anything to cheer up our little captain. Tony, hair piece? How dare she? This is real, true, unadulterated, well, almost unadulterated hair, and it's mine. You want to talk about hair? Reed Carroll's hair, I notice, is beginning to wave. Wave goodbye. Go on, grab it, grab it. Come on, feel it, feel it. It's real, it's real, this hair. There are more important things to think about than grabbing your hair. We have to get you to the scene of the accident before it looks like you're on the run. And teeth? What about teeth? My teeth are my own. Reed Carroll's teeth are like stars. They come out at night, sleep in a glass like... Dr we have a problem. It's my mother. seconds to climb down the vine and cut across the front. No problem. Good to see you. Hello, Greed. Greed. I'd like you to meet a young... I'm such a huge fan of yours. The son of the Swedish Prime Minister. The boy's my ward for a week. Doesn't speak a word of English, except for that bit, which he learned when he heard that Grant Logan was to be his custodian. Goodag. Trevlik atrapas. Skull. Do you smell something? No, no. You're all right. Mr. Tinks, well, has your brilliant crew solved the crime yet? Oh, you'll know when that happens. You'll be in prison. Where's that wretched stench coming from? Grant, what do you make of all this? Well, one thing's for sure. Money was not our culprit's motivation. No, no. What we have here is the sociopathic variety of criminal. Whoever did this is a man for whom destruction is a sick thrill. Stay out of this area. The suspect's footprints are in this perimeter. I knew that. Our culprit is plagued by hateful thoughts, obsessed with vengeful feelings for Reed Carroll, haunted by this man's very name and face. The footprints. The ones the suspect made in the mud. The footprints. The footprints are those of the suspect. 
As you see, not a very bright individual, seeing how carelessly he has left easily traceable tracks, evidence no. of no. his presence at the scene of the crime. No. And then again, perhaps not. Au contraire, perhaps he is a very bright individual indeed. Cavalier, in fact, brazen in his confidence that he will not be caught thriving on the cat and mouse game. <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me a moment. This had better be important. I have a captivated audience. Your footprints are identical to the ones in the mud. We have to get out of here before anyone notices. My young ward has just informed me, in Swedish, that he is late for his herring fishing class. I shall see you all again soon. Until then, good day. Sir, his footprints match the ones in the mud. Stop him! I'm wanted for car theft. I'm being hunted by an insurance investigator. And worst of all, I had to shake hands with Reed Carroll. I don't know why I let you get me into these situations. Uh, um, what are you waiting for? Fill it up. They've gone. Anyway, you got into this on your own. I didn't destroy the silver bullet. If I had, I'd have made sure that Reed Carroll was in it. No. But you did steal it. What? Someone switched the car towing your trailer with the car towing Reed Carroll's trailer then switch the license plates. That's why your monogrammed gloves and your fingerprints were found inside. Because Reed Carroll drove Bruce Davis's empty trailer and not his own. Oh. I knew I'd come up with a logical explanation. I just needed to think about it. Now all we have to do is prove you're innocent. What do you mean, we? I've just figured out how the theft was done. Don't you think you ought to do a little bit of thinking around here, too? This is insane. We have to get to Hink's footprints while they're still clear. I found a small piece of plaster in one of your footprints. Davies must have somehow got moles of your soles and stamped them around the car. That's why he had me park in the mud by the water trough. Now, if we can do the same to Hinks, we can prove you're framed. Start mixing the plaster. Water. Plaster. Might as well just dip it all in, make it nice. What am I supposed to mix it with? Well, use your hands. long. Gotta get home. Yeah, well, your mother won't even know you've left. Anyway, you've been grounded. What's she gonna do? Cut out your meals? It's not that that I'm worried about. It's just she'll get all weird and think she's a failure as a parent. That's the worst. Oh, yeah. My mum was like that. Whenever any of my brothers or sisters got into trouble, she'd always blame herself, think she'd ruin them. Bet they turned out all right, though. Well, one brother's a bookie, the other's got his own account at the prison tuck shop. My elder sister, she's a dancer. Hmm, Bally? No, Belly. Still, I turned out to be a solid professional. The others would have been fine if she hadn't gone and died on us. She was a great mum. And part of what made her great was the fact that she worried about us. I just wish she wouldn't get so upset. Well, 
You just think yourself lucky that she does. Bruce Davies house at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. I'll meet you there at 8.30 sharp. Well, it's nice to see you're still alive. I can explain. Yes, I'm sure you can. What should I do, Ripley? Do I need to be more strict? Should I just not worry about you? It's not you, Mum. Well, I'm obviously doing something wrong. Maybe you need something that I can't give you. I don't think so. Your father went to Crestridge when he was your age. Boarding school! Don't get me wrong, I'm not threatening you. But your dad did want you to go there. And Crestridge did a lot for him. Maybe they can give you something that I can't. No, they can't. Don't panic. I'm not going to force you into anything. But I do think we should take a look. It may be the best thing for you. In the meantime, you're under house arrest. Ripley, where are you? Thank you for coming. You're welcome. I'm taking you in. Get in the car. I think not. You don't have an ounce of evidence, and I'm here to prove it. Oh, really? Investigator Hinks, have you ever visited these premises before? No. And you have no history of sleepwalking? Then will you kindly explain to me why your footprints appear on the other side of these gates? You see, Mr. Hinks, you don't need a foot to make a footprint. All you need is a little plaster. I stole the silver bullet. Yes, I, Grant Logan, stole the silver bullet from Reed Carroll. It took a very clever, nay, an extremely, even a brilliant man to involve Grant Logan in the crime of the century without his knowledge. Beyond these gates, in that house, is the man who masterminded the theft of the silver bullet. <laughs> in that house, you won't find a damn thing. Uh, nobody's lived there for 16 months. This house belongs to the bank. Excuse me while I go to my car and fetch the rest of the evidence. But he isn't allowed to use the phone. Is this Jeremy? Yes, it is, and this is an emergency. Well, it'll have to wait till next week when Ripley's finished doing his time. No, no, you don't understand. This is a really, really big, big emergency. It's a life at or death situation. If he doesn't come to the phone, I'll kill him. Don't let your mother know I let you talk to him. Hello, Jeremy. 
Where were you? I couldn't get out. Mum caught me sneaking in the house. She's thinking of sending me to boarding school. Yes, well, they're thinking of sending me to prison. Didn't the plaster moulds work? It worked brilliantly. Except Mr. Davis doesn't live in Mr. Davis' house anymore. In fact, I, I don't even think that that's his real name. Calm down, all right. Where are you now? I'm in a phone box by my flat. I can't get in because Hinks has posted his goons outside. OK, wait there. I'll meet you when I can. In the meantime, I want you to phone every junkyard in the phone book and find out which ones have sold wrecked green Jaguars recently. Grandma, if you've ever trusted me, you have to trust me now. My best friend is in deep, deep trouble. And he can't get out of this trouble without you. I think I'll take a nap. It's a pity, but I probably won't see or hear a thing while I'm asleep. You're the best, Grandma. Found out. I found six junkyards that have recently sold green Jaguars, all of them wrecks. Uh, I've written down here the addresses they were delivered to. Now, will you please tell me why you were suddenly so interested in green Jaguars? Where did you get these cards? Uh, let me see. I got that one from a man at the car show, and this one I found at Reed Carroll's attached to the auction results. Hey, that's a strange coincidence. No, it's not a coincidence. Look at this, one of the delivery addresses matches that of Nicholas Noy's classic cars. Will you please explain to me what's going on? In the car. Make sure you drive past your apartment. I just told you, Hinks has his men posted outside. Exactly. Make sure they follow us to that address. I'm sorry, you'll have to come back some other time. We're closed. That's right, come quietly, Mr. Logan. If you wish to see the silver bullet again, you'll be quiet, Mr. Hinks, and watch me work. Mr. Noyes, do you know who I mean by Reed Carroll? <laughs> of course I do, everyone does. He's that handsome, famous actor who plays... A simple yes or no will suffice. You made Reed Carroll an offer for the silver bullet when it failed to sell at auction. He declined the offer because it was too low, but you gave him your business card anyway in case he changed his mind. Am I right? What's wrong with that? It's how I earn a living. You earn your living by finding unique cars for wealthy customers. You already had a customer for the silver bullet, probably someone out of the country, somewhere where it wouldn't matter too much if the car was stolen. How dare you insult me like this? What you didn't reckon on was Grant Logan. You employed a man to hire me to protect his car, a Rolls Royce 20. A car in many ways not uh, dissimilar to this one. When the show was over, Reed Carroll locked the silver bullet in the back of his trailer and somehow you lured him out of the parking lot. That gave you enough time to switch cars on the identical trailers. I'm not going to stand here and listen to this rubbish. Sit down, then! When Reed Carroll returned, he drove away with an empty trailer. I, on the other hand, towed away the trailer containing the silver bullet, also unaware that the cars had been switched. What about your fingerprints and gloves? I was in the empty trailer, helping to secure the car I had been paid to protect. As Mr. Hinks will tell you, I had the perfect motive. Bitterness and jealousy. Well, perhaps I was jealous and bitter not anymore, because I have realized that Reed Carroll and Grant Logan have a mutual respect for each other's talent.
talent. And perhaps, perhaps Reed Carroll did give his fans the definitive Johnny Silver. And Reed Carroll also realizes that there is only one detective brilliant enough and find the silver bullet intact. Yes, I said intact. But before I reveal the real silver bullet, tell me, Mr. Noise, Why did you recently purchase a wrecked Jaguar and paint it silver? You're going to pay for this. Do you know who that was on the phone? The adoption agency? No. I just had a very long talk with Mr. Mayor. Who? Jeremy's father. Oh. Of course. You should have told me. I would have understood. You would have? Of course I would. I blame myself, really. I should have trusted you more. I'm proud of you, Ripley. I hope you'll accept my apology. Apology accepted. Um, so I assume this means... You're not grounded anymore. Oh, once again, thanks. I'm forever indebted to you. You know, one of these days we'll have to team up and do a show together. Of course, if I'm not too busy. Oh, of course, of course. Hey. Eric Silfiskit. Skull. What did you tell my mother? Uh, you mean, what did Jeremy's father tell your mother? I've been going through this terrible divorce. Poor Jeremy's been caught right in the middle. Uh, and I don't know what he'd have done during this dark and tumultuous episode of his life if it hadn't been for dear Ripley. What a wonderful mother you must be to have such a kind, mature son. I owe you one. <laughs> yeah, well, join the queue. You know, I think I misjudged Reed Carroll. We're actually quite similar in many ways. And when you see yourself reflected in another person, you do tend to see their faults more easily. How true. Seen the evening paper yet? Grant Logan and Reed Carroll in The Brothers 
Karamazov. <laughs> it was his idea. In a car chase that would be extraordinary, even by TV standards, Reed Carroll heroically drove his stolen car to safety, blowing the lid of the silver bullet mystery. Reed Carroll? Reed Carroll couldn't blow the lid off a teapot! You want to talk mysteries? What about Reed Carroll's acting? Ha! Ha 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 ha!